Well, this is it. After Kazuya's presentation, we are down to the final character for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We have made it to 11 DLC characters, 12 if you want to count Plan, and it's been a wild ride. But after the 11th character, that's it. No more DLC for Ultimate. No bonus character, no third fighter pass, and as much as people have been hoping for it, Sakurai has reiterated again and again, this is it. This is the grand finale for Ultimate. And because of that, a lot of people's hopes and dreams for who they want to get into Smash are riding on this final character. And with that comes the harsh reality that a lot of people's hopes and dreams are sadly going to get crushed. It's hard to please the masses, and it's especially hard when everyone wants something different. You got people who want Crash Bandicoot, people who want Master Chief, Sora, Dante. Oh, poor Dante. He was a character that I wanted all the way back with Fighter Pass Volume 1. And even when he didn't get in, people kept their hype going all the way through this pass. And yeah, when he got turned into a me costume, that was a bit disappointing. But it just goes to show that Smash is a very hard game to predict for. And yet you still have people grasping at straws, trying to link every little thing Nintendo does back to Smash. For example, on Nintendo's Twitter page the other day, they posted a new trailer for SMT5, and there were people in the comments who were saying that the protagonist was going to be a lock for the final DLC spot. And look, I know that you guys want to correlate every little thing Nintendo does back to Smash, but if that was the case, we'd be getting shit like Bakugan and DC Superhero Girls into Smash. Really hope I didn't just jinx that. But as much as I like to poke fun at this stuff, it's this type of wild speculation that keeps discussion about Ultimate from getting stale. And whether you like it or not, the hype surrounding the roster is always going to be a huge part of Smash's community. So, with that being said, I figured I would throw my hat in the ring and give some predictions of my own. Here are some of my ideas on who could claim the final DLC slot for Smash Ultimate. Starting off with what I think is a pretty safe bet, I'm going to say that the most likely option is that we end the pass with a first party Nintendo character. Now I know a lot of people are thinking that we should end the pass with some big heavy hitting third party gaming icon, but at the end of the day, this is Nintendo's fighting game and they're going to want to promote their games first and foremost. However, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because we have some pretty big games coming up later this year that Nintendo could definitely put into Smash. One of those games is Metroid Dread and the other, well, other two are the Diamond and Pearl remakes. Now, I think in the case of Metroid Dread, you could definitely make the case for Emmy, the new robot antagonist that we see in the game for getting into Smash. They've got some cool movement options that I think Sakurai could definitely put into a really cool and unique moveset into the game. And then in the case of Pokemon, I know a lot of people were thinking that maybe we should get a Galar rep like Toxtricity or Cinderace or Rillaboom, but with the Diamond and Pearl remakes coming up and we're also getting Arceus Legends in January, I think Nintendo's really going to want to push a Sinnoh Pokemon. And this could be an existing Sinnoh Mon, could be a legendary, but I think the best way to really showcase Legends Arceus especially would be to include a new form of an existing Sinomon. It would be a great way to show that this is an ancient, feudal Sinnoh, and it would spark interest in Legends Arceus by having a Pokemon from that game be present in Smash. Because I know some people, after seeing the footage of Legends Arceus, are still a bit on the fence over how the game's going to turn out, but by having a fighter in Smash, that's a really good way to get people really interested in the game. Now, if it was me picking a first party rep for Nintendo, I'd have to go with Andy from Advance Wars. He's been my most wanted Nintendo pick all the way back since Brawl, and he wouldn't be completely out of left field with the Advance Wars reboot coming out in December, I think. So, yeah, Andy, I think, 
definitely has a slim chance, but if we're going up against Pokemon and Metroid in terms of Nintendo deciding if they want to put one of their characters in Smash, I don't really think that Andy stands a chance against this competition, but a boy can dream. While we're on the topic of likely and somewhat controversial scenarios for the final DLC pack, let's move on to a character that a lot of people are on the fence about. That character is Jonesy from Fortnite. Now I know, a lot of people have their opinions on Fortnite. I personally don't really dislike the game, not a huge fan of it either. I've played the game, I don't think it's bad, and I do gotta commend them for how they get people hyped up. I mean, I barely play the game, but with their seasons and crossovers, it always seems to drag me back in. It's the same effect that Smash has on me, where it's like, if you put something crazy and exciting in the game, it's most likely gonna draw me to the game, but I'm getting off topic. So Jonesy is a character that I think is very likely just because of how big Fortnite is. There's really no other reason other than that. I mean, sure, I think that Sakurai could pull a really unique moveset out of the character, but I'm more looking at Epic's relationship with Nintendo. Like, there is a special edition Switch for Fortnite. Nintendo promotes the hell out of this game with every chance that they can get on Twitter. And I think that it would go over really well with the more casual and younger fans that might not want to touch Smash otherwise. If you put a character from Fortnite in the game, you're going to get an influx of customers that most likely would have not been too interested in Smash in the first place. If you put something in that's really recognizable to this younger generation, they're going to gravitate to it. Okay. So now that we have gotten that out of the way, I want to touch on a couple of characters that I personally really want, but also think they have a very sizable chance of getting into the game regardless. The first of these characters is Rayman. This limbless hero has always been my number one dream pick for Smash, and I personally think that his chances of getting in have never been better. And that is largely due to the fact that Nintendo and Ubisoft have a really good working relationship at the moment. Ever since the Switch's release, we have been getting pretty notable collaborations with Ubisoft and Nintendo. It started with Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, and then we got Star Fox characters in Starlink, and now we are getting a sequel to Mario Rabbit's next year. Normally, I wouldn't think too much of a company like this having a good relationship with Nintendo, but for Nintendo to trust them with Mario? poster boy? That's a pretty big deal in my opinion. And because of this relationship, I definitely think that it could lead to more content in Smash. I mean, yeah, we already got the Mii costumes with Altair and the Rabbids in the game, but Rayman feels like too big of a character for them to omit from Smash. I mean, I know he's a spirit, but... Having him as a full fighter, I feel like that's definitely something that's in the cards considering Ubisoft and Nintendo's relationship. And to be honest, I just really want Rayman. And Rayman fans have not gotten anything for years. The last big thing was Legends, and it's like, if Ubisoft isn't going to give us content for Rayman, our next big hope is for Nintendo to give us something. So the final character I want to talk about comes from a series already represented in Smash, and yet I've not seen too many people talking about this possibility. I am referring to Frisk, or the human, from Undertale. Now I know, Undertale already got represented in a huge way in the form of the Sans Gunner costume for the Miis. And while people were thinking that, oh wow, that's a really good way to represent Undertale in Smash, I always thought it was a bit weird that we never got a spirit event for this game. Considering how big it is in both the West and Japan, it just feels odd that Undertale never got a spirit event. And on top of that, with all these deluxe Mii costumes and all these indie characters getting turned into Miis, I think it would be a really neat way to cap off the fighter pass by just putting an indie character in as a full-fledged fighter to end the pass with. And besides just wanting more Undertale content in Smash, 
I genuinely think that they could make a really interesting moveset for Frisk, considering the whole gameplay mechanic of deciding to play with pacifism or violence that could definitely create a really unique angle for a new and fresh moveset to wrap up the fighter pass with. However, at the end of the day, I'm going to be content with whatever happens. We have gotten so much content out of this game already that I feel like it would be hard to truly be disappointed at this point. And with that being said, I want to thank Sakurai and his team for giving us such an incredible gaming crossover because there may never be a game like this again, or at least for a very long time after Ultimate, but I guess we will just have to wait and see what the final slot brings us. Anyway, that's enough out of me. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.